One thing that's great about this electronics hobby is that uh, often one project will lead to another and lead to another and lead to another. And this is a good example of that. Uh, you may remember this project here. Uh, this all started uh, by me creating this little sketch in an Arduino to draw out my ham radio call sign in XY mode on the scope. And that kind of came from doing some other XY uh, projects with the scope. Uh, that led to another video that uh, basically went through um, a digital to analog converter built of nothing but resistors called an R2R resistor ladder uh, DAC or digital analog converter. We did a whole tutorial uh, on how that uh, R2R ladder works. So then that led to this project that you're seeing here where uh, we wrote a little sketch to take this uh, 1980s vintage uh, tech logo and make it look like it's spinning around on the screen as a little bit of an attention getter. So, uh, so these projects just uh, build on one another. And uh, this led to uh, the next project. So let's go take a look at that. The idea for the next project came after watching uh, this video on YouTube. Uh, this is a, a 1930s vintage uh, model 905 CRT. And uh, it's kind of unique in that it's, you know, it's clear so you can see the deflection plates and things like that. And, uh, Bob over at the Vintage Tech Museum in Portland, Oregon, uh, put this um, video together to show you know the operation of the CRT. But what really caught my eye was that he was doing some nice XY graphics with a whole lot more resolution than what I did with my project. So I got in touch with Bob, and uh, that kind of started uh, you know the path for uh, my next project here. So when I did the first uh, XY uh, project with my block letter call sign. I built this little R2R ladder DAC, and uh, this is being driven by essentially an 8-bit port and a 6-bit port on the uh, on the Arduino Uno, and uh, so I had 8 bits of resolution in the X orientation and 6 bits of resolution in the Y orientation, and that uh, worked okay for my low-resolution graphics. Now when I went to do the spinning tech logo. I really didn't have any more requirements for higher resolution, but uh, I wanted to make the design a bit more robust. So I, I built this, uh, you know, proto shield up with uh, all of the resistors to make the R2R ladder DAC, and that worked great. But uh, both of these suffer the same problem in that um, the Y, you know, axis, if you will, has only got six bits of resolution. So in going back and forth with Bob, he said, why don't you just, uh, you know, why did you use six bits? I said, well, it, you only have an eight-bit port and two six-bit ports. And, you know, he kind of gave me the obvious answer that I didn't think of was, well, why don't you just take two bits out of the other six-bit port and get eight-bit, you know, two eight-bit, you know, resolutions. It's like, oh, well, that's a great idea. So I, I built a, uh, a more, uh, even a simplified version of the uh, uh, a dual eight-bit R2R DAC. In this case, I used a pair of uh, R2R resistor networks. Um, here's the data sheet for them. They're made by Borns. Uh, they make a lot of resistor networks and things like that. Uh, so um, this is the format for the, the single inline package 8-bit uh, R2R ladder that I used on this proto shield. So it's very simple on the top, and the back is just you know point-to-point -point wired. But uh, even cleaner and a lot more robust even than uh, than my version with the the C of uh, resistors. So now I've got a, a dual 8-bit R2R DAC. So uh, that was the first step of the puzzle to get the resolution up in both X and Y, or at least in, in Y so that it matches X. So the next bit of it was to take a look at what Bob had done with uh, his graphics. So Bob had actually uh, worked at the graphics division at Tektronix and uh, certainly a real programmer <laughs> and I'm not, I'm a hack when it comes to programming. So, um, so he was able to do this really fancy graphic. So um, he had sent me some information and sent me some code um, you know, for the Arduino here. And one of the things that uh, you know, I saw when I started to read the code was that uh, he used this optimized implementation of this Bresenham's algorithm. Uh, and certainly this is a whole lot more advanced than what I was doing with my simple programming here. So, um, so you know, Bob and I got to talking. He said, "Well, let me uh, let me modify the code for you, um, so you can do it with your, uh, you know, two eight-bit R2R DACs." 
Yeah, so here's the result of uh, marrying uh, Bob's sketch and uh, my dual 8-bit R2R DAC. Now Bob did a couple things uh, in the code that were a lot different than what I did. You know, first was uh, using uh, you know, this uh, digital differential analyzer, you know, Bresenham's algorithm. But what he also did is, since he's got so many more points that are being used to generate the graphic, those points are all stored in flash memory as opposed to uh, the program memory inside the microcontroller. There's a lot more available space there, uh, so that is a, a good logical choice to uh, store the data. So the two graphics uh, that are we've got XY data for are this old Tektronix logo, which happens to match the same logo that's on this 465B oscilloscope. And there's certainly a lot of XY points in there. And the other graphic that you see is we call the wizard. Um, the wizard is one of many little graphic cartoons that made an appearance in a lot of the Tektronix service manuals and schematics. And I think the wizard uh, first appeared on the schematic of the, I think it was the 454 vertical preamp. So if you actually look in the service manual for that, you'll see the, the wizard sitting on the schematic. And there are, I don't know, maybe a dozen or more uh, cartoons that you'll find hidden away in some of the old Tektronix documentation. So um, I just thought that was kind of an interesting story. And to me, now this, this really is a really nice attention grabber if you want to kind of set something up as a demonstration on a table. Uh, it's a really interesting way of uh, you know, just kind of showing you know, some of the old XY graphics on a nice uh, vintage scope here. So I really appreciate uh, you know, Bob sharing this stuff with me. And I thought I'd also take a few moments to talk a little bit about uh, Vintage Tech and what that's all about. A vintage Tech, uh, located in Portland, Oregon, was established primarily to commemorate Tech's you know, kind of decades-long leadership in the analog CRT oscilloscope segment of you know, the test and measurement industry. They're you know, a charitable organization to provide educational and a scientific museum. They've got a, a ton of really nice uh, restored scopes and equipment and things like that in their location. Um, and they really commemorate the early history of Tektronix and really Tektronix's role in spawning you know, more than 300 you know, high-tech companies in what's come to be known as the Silicon Forest, which is kind of the you know, four-county, you know, two-state metropolitan area around uh, Portland, Oregon. Many, many companies you know, kind of owe their start to, uh, to Tektronix. They are a fully independent nonprofit, you know, 501c3 organization. Um, and they do some really fantastic work there. Uh, they've got a, a fantastic museum of equipment. Uh, there's a lot of volunteers that uh, you know, maintain all the equipment there. They restore things. They also have uh, several things for sale on the website, uh, some excess uh, materials and things like that. Lots of picture galleries and video galleries. Just a really great place. A couple of really great guys that uh, kind of run the place. And uh, if you're ever in the Portland area, yeah, I would definitely recommend going to visit them. They're only open, I think, currently two days a week. Uh, the hours uh, you can find on the website here, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Um, but really great place. You know, take a look through the website, peruse around, uh, look at some of the things that they have for sale. Just a great organization. And uh, you know, I've met uh, you know, kind of the founders there, uh, Stan and Ed and a number of the volunteers including uh, Bob, who uh, you know, basically provided uh, all the code for this little project we talked about, and a lot of the other guys that, uh, that do a lot of the restoration work and record keeping and things like that. But anyway, great place. I'll have some more information uh, in the notes for the video here, not only for Vintage Tech, but I'll also give you some links uh, for the code for today's project, a schematic for today's project, um, and uh, whatever information I think might be helpful for you watching this video. Anyway, thanks again for watching and uh, certainly appreciate uh, you being there and we'll see you next time.